and we'll go ahead and get started in. To be true, can't take my eyes off of you. You'd be like heaven to touch. I wanna hold you so much. At long last, love has arrived. And I thank God I'm alive. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. my share. So sometimes dating can be very embarrassing. You, he put himself out there. Uh, and really, I bet you he was pretty scared to do it. So we are going to talk about love and the dating game in the animal world. Kathy, could you tell Caitlin who you are? My name's Kathy Fisher, and I am an old, old friend of Casey's. We've done a lot of teaching and educating together. Um, so I am just a friend of hers, and we love to do this program about dating in the animal world. So I hope you enjoy it. If you're just joining us, we're just getting started. And we'll... Keep going. Welcome to Love yeah. is in the Air, presented by Casey Harris and Kathy Fisher. All right. So the big picture, what we hope that you're able to leave knowing a little bit more about is how does the animal kingdom find the perfect mate? So we're going to show you the different ways that animals find their mates. So as humans, finding our perfect mate can be all about this really long process of dating until you find the right match. So what kinds of things do you think that humans look for in a mate? What do you guys think? So some of the most common answers are things like looks. Um, maybe as an adult, we're looking at, do they have a good job? Can they provide for us? Maybe um, I know that when I was really young, I dated a couple guys because they had really nice cars. Um, <laughs> they may not have been the most handsome guys around, but they had really nice cars. <laughs> and. <laughs> Um, maybe if they're strong, um, and then kindness. And so, Caitlin, I think that ties right in with a good personality. What about you, Kathy? What do you think that? Uh, How about somebody that does the same things that you like to do? Ah, that's a good one. Things that you might have in common. Yep. Yep. And the big thing to remember, especially when we go through this and we talk about animals, is beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Meaning that what I think is good looking isn't necessarily what Kathy is gonna think is good looking or what you think is good looking and vice versa. So we're all looking for different things in a mate and that's, honestly what's going on with animals as well they are all looking for something specific when they are looking for a mate
Now, I told you that our, our trip to find a mate could take years. I actually have a friend who, well, um, it's my daughter's brother-in-law. He's been dating the same girl for 10 years. Um, 10 years is a long time to date somebody. And they haven't dated anybody else, just each other for 10 years. Um, so, but animals don't often have that luxury to spend 10 years trying to find the perfect mate. Some of them may only have hours to find a mate or days to find a mate. So instead of dating like we would, you see more dramatic mating games. So there are some really interesting and strange mating rituals in the animal kingdom. So we've picked a few, not all of them are strange, right, Kathy? Right. I, <laughs> I don't think they're strange at all. I think they're just unique to those individuals. And I just want to say, I am really glad that I had a long time to choose my mate not hours, because I would have made the way wrong choice if I had only had hours to do it. And I think, isn't there, I now I've never watched it. I think there's actually a TV show where people get married, like they've only known each other a couple hours and they get married. And I think that that, that can lead to some very big mistakes. When yeah, making, that would not be fun for me. Yeah, no, no. I've been married 30 this year will be 38 years, and I'm really glad I picked the right mate, and we have a lot in common. As Kathy pointed out, that's really important, um, and we actually sort of complete each other, like Lori said. We complete each other. All right. So romance or mating is all about getting the attention of the opposite sex. That video at the beginning where Heath Ledger was singing to the girl on uh, the football field, that was him trying to get her attention. He's putting some himself out there to get her attention. So some of the things that we do is we dress nice, we put on perfume or cologne, we give gifts like flowers or candy, and we go out to dinner or we go dancing or we go to the movies and to get our attention sometimes we show off our muscles our hairstyles and our other talents well other animals in the animal kingdom do similar things so we're going to check that out kathy do you want to talk about um color <laughs> Yeah, so color is one of the things that many animals use. You might um, be able to think of some things. A lot of birds use coloration in their mating games. Um, but this one happens to be the peacock. And I think um, someone mentioned the peacock at the beginning. The peacock does use its fantastic tail feathers and colors to, to attract, that's the male, and he uses those to attract the female. You can see in the picture, the female is very dull. Any ideas why the female is dull and the male gets all the fun colors? Yeah, definitely. They ha they're very different, so they, they can determine which ones are the boys and which ones are the girls. But why do you think the, ma the females need to be a dull color think about what the female's job is in life what do they do after they have mate mated they have a nest they lay eggs and what do they do with that nest sit on the nest that's typically the female's job is to sit on the nest the whole time and keep track of those eggs make sure they're warm make sure nothing's getting them so she has to blend in much more than the male. So the male gets all the bright colors to attract the right female. But like Casey said in the beginning, peacocks aren't always very smart. So while they do know where the female peacocks are, sometimes they like to use their, their dance and colors to display to other objects. Sometimes it's a big rock. So peacocks aren't the brightest bulb in the pack all right 
Um, so this is a bird that you may have never even heard of before. They are actually critically endangered. They're found in New Zealand. Um, they're working really hard to um, bring this population of birds back up. This is a parrot. It's called a kakapo and they do not fly. They are a flightless bird and New Zealand is an island and they did not historically when they evolved, they didn't have to worry about mammals as pre predators. And so they are flightless. And now the problem is lots of mammals have been introduced into New Zealand that can catch them and eat them. Um, they have very, very strong, they still climb trees. Their favorite fruit is up in the trees, um, but they don't really fly. They can't fly. Females can glide a little bit, but they can't fly. They're flightless. And as you can see, it's a pretty good sized bird. That's an adult holding that bird. They are a very heavy bird. They're very big. So these birds sing, the males sing and they're nocturnal. These parrots are nocturnal. They come out at night and they have a ritual that they do and all the males will find a specific area um, to themselves and they will sing. And they have two different sounds that they make and they're in the mountains and the call can go five kilometers. I mean, it can go a pretty good distance to, for the females to hear it. And then they have a second sound that they make to actually help her hone in on where um, the male is. Now I have a video um, I want to show you guys of a male um, kakapo and he is um, getting ready or well, he's going to call in a female or hope he calls in a female that a female will come see him. So let me pull it up real quick for you guys. Hang on a second. Oh, five kilometers, Casey. That's a little over three miles. I know. Can you guys wow. imagine if you had to call to your friend or your parent or your sibling who was three miles away and expect them to hear you? That would be quite a call. And when you actually hear it, it doesn't even sound like it's something that would carry that far. It really doesn't sound like it would carry that far, but it does. And that's what's one of the things that's so unbelievable about this. Now, the screen starts out dark, because remember this is at night that they're filming this Kakapo um, who is calling. It's midnight. And this five-year-old has walked to the top of a hill to perform a bizarre ritual, unique among parrots. He chooses a site where he makes himself comfortable in what's called a bowl. He's a newcomer to the Kakapo mating ritual, where each male must sing all night long if he's going to attract a mate. First, he sucks in air, inflating himself to maximum size. Then, he begins his serenade. That's not exactly the song you thought you were going to hear, is it? <laughs> Hang on. This low-frequency boom can be heard for miles. But just to make sure, he also exudes an alluring scent that may help attract females. His use of noise and smell are sure signs this bird evolved without worrying about predators. Booming should draw females to the hilltop but high-pitched squeaks, known as chings, are needed to help them find his exact position. Sadly, tonight's not his night, and no one responds to his call. That's sad. Um, now, he's five years old, and you heard them say that he's a newcomer to this. They uh, don't reach maturity 
and aren't old enough to find a mate until they're five years old. So that's his first opportunity to find a mate is at five. Kathy, did you want to talk about red-winged blackbirds? Yeah, so red-winged blackbirds are one of the first um, birds to arrive. If you ever watch birds coming back from migration in the spring, they are one of the first ones to arrive and they start singing immediately. You will hear them singing. They sing a brilliant song um, as they're building nests to attract their females into the nests they build. However, they have some unique rituals with the red-winged blackbirds in that one male might have up to 15 females that he takes charge of and that he guards and that he protects. Um, however, the females don't always put all their eggs in one basket either. They will secretly mate with other males. So the, the nest, the eggs that are in the nest could be from several different male red-winged blackbirds. Kathy, have you been uh, dive bombed by a male red winged blackbird? Oh, they are very aggressive during mating season. If you are in their territory, they will fly at your head. They will try to chase you out of there. Those males, especially when they have multiple females they're trying to guard, they will try and get do anything they can to get you out. They're pretty cool birds. Um, hang on one second. I'm I'm gonna share just I've got a really quick recording of their call. It's a very different, different call than what we heard from the um hang on a second. Okay, why did it do that? Hang on. Oh so theirs is happened. a very different call and it won't it it won't travel as far. They're much more close together when they're trying to to bring in females, it's not going to travel up to the multiple miles like the other one you heard. Okay, I've got it fast forwarded to this spot where we've got a male red winged blackbird. Birds like marshes and wet grasslands, and they are familiar sights atop cattails, along soggy roadside ditches, and on telephone wires. Males spend much of the go. breeding season sitting on a high perch, singing their hearts out. Females are a subdued, streaky brown, almost like a large dark sparrow. They build their nests low among the vertical shoots of marsh vegetation. I thought that there was more singing. There's their eggs. They're really cute. There's their really cute little babies. Okay, here we go. Long, agile flyers. Nope. If you'd like to attract them to your yard. Okay. I thought I had downloaded the song one. I'm sorry, guys. But we did get to see their really adorable babies on that one. And you'll notice they also have the color differentiation that we talked about with the peacocks. So the males have the bright red and yellow on their wings, and the females are very dull. All right, Kathy, you want to talk about our flamingos? Well flamingos are very cool birds to begin with however they do a flash mob when they're trying to attract their mate do you guys know what a flash mob is like when all of a sudden a whole bunch of people start dancing to something sometimes it's in public in the middle of a downtown square flamingos do something very similar one of them will start off with their little dance and then Sometimes many, many will come and join them. And both the females and the males will dance once they find that perfect mate. Do you have a, a video of their dance I for this one? I actually have a video of the flash mob. Um, and it was really hard to pick because there was, there's Chilean flamingos and there's African flamingos. And both of those flash mobs are pretty impressive because up to a million flamingos will be in the African area and it's just amazing. So let me get my flamingo flash mob. Hang on a second. I think this one is in South America. Hold on. It's one I went with. All right. Hang on a second. And let me share my screen. So just imagine a whole lot of sort of tall pink birds coming together to do a line dance. I'm and not sure that's a good way for us to choose our partners 
No. And wait till you see the size differentiation. That's when you tell that you can tell that just like with us, there's all different sizes of flamingos. Everybody's, all the flamingos aren't the same size. They're all different sizes. And they have over a hundred different moves that they can do in there. It doesn't look like it because there's so many of them together. The lakes of East Africa's Rift Valley. Oh, it Valley. is Africa. one of the animal world's biggest dance. Okay, all of that that you see that's in the funny color, that's like a pink, that's all flamingos, guys. That's all flamingos. Floors. In a crowd of more than a million, catching someone's eye calls for a dance contest of epic proportions. By comparing and contrasting precise and synchronized moves, male and female lesser flamingos keep their eye out for a suitable partner. Good rhythm and coordination suggest a good match. Exacting choreography is one way to stand out on the flamingo dance floor, but it's not the only way. To find a mate, birds also need to be pink, as pink as possible. Flamingo's coloration is a byproduct of grazing on the lake's algal blooms. Birds that are more efficient at foraging are a brighter pink. All right. Let me stop sharing. That was a lot of birds. A lot of birds in one place at the same time. Yeah, I'm glad we don't have to have a million people in order to find our mates. That would be hard. Well, I mean, think about it. So we have 8 billion humans on the planet now. And I think that, uh, let's see, Elise, is it 3 million that Houston's up to, I think, in population? So that sounds that, about right. Yeah, I think there's 3 million people in Houston. So imagine that I think that makes the human dating game more challenging in Houston or in big cities like that. So for sure. Our, <laughs> our next guy is only five inches in size. So think about he's a fish that he's only this big. Okay, and he demonstrates um, his talent for art in order to attract a female puffer fish. And he will work on that piece of art for days. And the size of that circle, this is on, you know, um, just a photograph. And so the photograph does not do it justice. We're talking. 22 feet in size little five inch fish and he makes a circle that's 22 feet in diameter okay and he has all of those channels in there and he's very inter intricately making this um i don't even know look he doesn't have um compound vision like us his vision is on one side so to be able to make something with no depth perception 
is pretty amazing. Um, once he's finished it, he decorates it. You can see there's some shells on there. He's going to put uh, different types of sediment to show the different, um, like if you look at it, you can see that there's some pieces, different pieces of sediment in there. Um, now, his goal is to have a female go, oh, that is the perfect place to lay my eggs. And if she approves, she will, right in the middle of that piece of art, um, lay her eggs. It's pretty wild, isn't it? That's really cool. <laughs> He's only five inches. That's the part that blows me away. Now, there are some disagreements among scientists as to um, they say that the channels that he's made are actually to make the sediment flow correctly and that it's not truly an art project. But there, like I said, it's a disagreement between scientists. They're still studying them because this is so unique. Uh, that looks like a lot of blue trash, doesn't it? Just if you look at the picture, the upper picture, what kinds of things do you guys see in that picture? Bottle caps. Bottle caps. Yep. Yeah, I was going to say it looks like water bottle caps and maybe a crayon. <laughs> yep. Um, one researcher actually, and I didn't put the picture in because it was sort of I found it a little disturbing, but it was a little blue doll and the doll was actually the face that was drawn on it was screaming. Um, but right in the middle of a Bower Birds collection was a little blue doll. Um, they are kleptomaniacs. Um, when it's breeding season, the males, which depending on the light is either blue or black, um, they go around and depending on the species of Bower Bird is the colors of things that they collect. This one is a, oh, I forgot what this variety of bowerbird is. And this particular bowerbird um, species collects blue. And scientists are saying that they are looking, it reflects UV light, what the colors that they do um, is because it reflects ultraviolet light. And they use trickery. So these guys are called bower birds. Now, if you look behind the male, you'll see that there's sticks that are standing upright and there's a hole in the middle. Look at the bottom picture. There's a female. It's like he is, uh, that's curtains on a stage that he's pulled apart. And the female comes up into that middle area and then it restricts her point of view, her view, and he presents each of these gifts one at a time to show her what he's collected for her. Now, the longer she sits in the bower, the greater the chance that she's gonna accept him as a mate. Like if she just pops her head through and then walks away, then there's no chance. But the longer she sits in that little um, bower that he's made, the better the chance that she's gonna accept him. Now, what's extremely cool is that researchers have actually realized that they're using several things to make their items look larger, okay? So they place them, it looks like trash that's been just dumped, but it's actually been placed in a specific pattern um, so that it looks like they're bigger pieces and more of them and it's how they lay them out. Um, there's bower birds that the colors that they lay out are, their background is gray and white, so they'll collect bones and rocks that are gray and white, and then they collect items that are, if I remember correctly, the color is green that they place on top of them, but he'll present every single piece individually to her. Kathy, what can you add to this about bower birds? I, I think they're just some of the most amazing birds out there. I think they are pretty amazing and obviously it works for them, but I'm certainly glad that Gail gave me chocolates instead of blue bottle caps or bones. Okay, I think I'd have been okay with the bones, but um, <laughs> not necessarily the bottle caps. Um, 
I'm I'm a little weird. I like bones. Um, well, but, that's true. <laughs> but this this bird uh, this species, um, if you guys ever want to, you're bored and you want to learn about a bird that is very unique. Um, the bower birds are extremely, and there's a I think there's four or five different um, species of bower birds. Each one, of course, makes a bower, but each one does different things like there's one that it's all about their eyes and they make their eyes do wild things um, to attract the female while she's in the bower so these are some very very unique birds oh kathy this is one of our favorites <laughs> You want to talk about what's the next? Elk? I'm not seeing it. Oh, you're not seeing it. Oh, it's our favorite. It's elk. Not yet. It is. It is. It might be my connection though, but elk. Oh my goodness. First of all, elk are a very large deer um, that have antlers and they will, first of all, use sound in bugling, they call it. And you can, you can hear them from quite a distance away there i see it um so they will bugle first and create um kind of a harem they'll get multiple females that will come to them they're another one of those species that likes to have uh, multiple females but the the bull elks the males will battle one another sometimes almost to death in order to select the females that they really want so those antlers, they put that head down and they will lock. Sometimes you you can see, find videos of them where two males, their antlers are locked together and they're pushing one another back and forth so strong and their strength, the strongest one is the one who will win. And I do have a video of a very short video clip of a battle. And oh, awesome. I have a video clip of a, bug a bugling and, you know, that rack, the antlers that he has on his head, did you guys see how big that is? Those weigh quite a bit. Like we like to wear hats. I like to wear hats, but my hats don't weigh very much. But those antlers, Kathy, how big, uh, isn't it like 40 or 50 pounds worth of antler that we've got oh, up yeah. there between when them? When you have a, a a bull at the size of that one in the picture, they can weigh up to 40 pounds or more um, between the both sides of their head. So they have to have a very, very strong neck in order to hold their head up with that, those antlers on it. Um, and then to battle now, somebody with them. I mean, that's right. to me. All right. This, I'm going to start with the trying to control where that 40 pounds is going as they're fighting somebody else. This guy and is frequently, a big guy. if you're out looking for elk, you won't always see them, but you'll hear this bugle. Okay, let's. Here we go. Notice how thick that neck is. That sound gives me goosebumps every time. All right, and then I've got a, hang on a second, let me. I like that sound. Isn't that beautiful? I like it's it It's not what you expected parrots. coming from a, it's not what you expected coming from a big, strong animal, was it? Okay, so this one is our elks battling. And this one's a very short clip. I made sure not to pick one where they're battling to the death.
he's leaving because he knows he's lost. He's lost the battle. So many times the weaker of the two will go ahead and give up because he knows if he sticks with it, he most likely will be killed in that battle. Yeah, he walked away. Okay, so we put on perfume, our guys put on cologne so that we smell really good for each other. Smell is very important. You've already heard that that parrot lets out a smell to attract the females. Um, we're gonna see a spider and actually the female puts out a smell on her silk to try and attract a male. So smell is very, very important in the animal world, in the mating game, just like it is in our world for us. And there are some very unique mating rituals. Um, and one of the most unique is here in North America and it's the North American porcupines. Now, in this picture, there is a male and a female porcupine. The only time that you see male and female porcupines together is actually when it's mating time. They live solitary lives. Um, they do not have uh, multiple litters during a year. And the females take sole responsibility for raising the babies. Here's the catch. There is only a 12 hour window during a whole year that the females can mate, all right? And they live alone. So they have to have a smell that's going to let male porcupines know, hey, I'm open for dating, okay? So she will put out a smell. Male porcupines come from all over and they fight each other because the females are very far apart. So one female is gonna have a lot of male porcupines that show up to date her, okay? Um, they battle each other. They have those wonderful teeth, big front teeth, um, incisors that they use to fight each other. And of course, they're quills. So here's the unique part. The winner is going to hose the female with urine to claim her. Now, how's that for a mating game? What do you guys think about that? I think that might be the part where your student, Miss <laughs> Harris, says she didn't believe that you weren't going to say anything gross. <laughs> Caitlin. <sounds> very unique. <laughs> I think Sanaya would be upset. What do you think, Caitlin? I agree. You said no <laughs> gross stuff. <laughs> We told you you were going to learn some unique rituals. Yeah, yeah. Sanaya, it's true that Sanaya shouldn't trust me. Um, I do not have a video for this for good reason. I don't have video for this. <laughs> okay, Kathy, you want to talk about hippos? Yeah, so hippos are another one that uses smell to attract their females. So again, the males will tend to battle and the, the strongest, most dominant males are the only ones that will get to breed with the females. But it's the female that gets to decide if she is going to mate with a male or not. However, this might be another gross one to some of you because the male hippo will pee and defecate or poop at the same time while moving its tail to send those items toward the female because he wants to get her attention. I think that would get your attention. Ugh. I'm not sure it's the right kind of attention we want. But in the hippo world, they adore that. So then she decides if she is okay, if that is her chosen mate, she will then do the same thing back to him to let him know that. I'm guessing you don't have a video of this one either. I had a video and then I changed <laughs> my mind at the last minute and decided that nobody really wanted to see that. Just hippos. Hippos are the right. only ones that want to see that. Right, Caitlin? Thank you for sparing us. <laughs> <laughs>
So you've probably noticed a lot of these animals have a couple of different rituals that they use. They might use strength and smell. They might use color and gifts. So a lot of animals have multiple rituals, just like Casey was talking about the things we do. We have multiple things that we might do to try and attract someone to us. Okay, so, you know, the ultimate, the ultimate sacrifice for love or mating is death. And there are several, um, not just one, but several different species of animals that are willing to take that risk of dying to be able to mate with another. So. Um, there are, uh, you've probably heard of praying mantis. That's like a big joke is that, you know, she bites his head off. Um, you might've heard black widows, that they're called black widows for a reason. It's not just the uh, widow, the spider shape on their belly or their hourglass on their belly. It's because they tend to kill the males. So there are a lot of species that that is something that the drive to find a mate is so strong that they're going to take that risk. This is called a peacock spider. You can actually tell why they call him a peacock spider is because um, I believe they call it a fan that he has up. When you see the video, you're going to see that it folds down and it looks like it's just his back. But when he's displaying, it comes up. Okay. And the female below is very dull. She is brown. Um, she has nothing exciting about her to look at. However, if she says no, if he is subpar in his performance, she is going to kill him. Now, when I say performance, this guy is going to dance. What they do to try and impress the female is they dance. Yes, spiders dance. Um, I have a video. Um, I actually found another one that I loved even more, but um, it was too long. But this one is a peacock spider dancing for his life, literally. Um, the other video I found, there were dead spiders, male spiders, all the way that he's going past to get to where she jumps out at him. But this one's still really good. Okay. All right. Let me. Where's my button? Share my screen. Okay. All right. Actually don't know the outcome of that one if she if he was successful or if she ate him and I like to leave that little mystery as to whether or not um, he survived I don't know I think that was pretty good I'm gonna go with he survived so what mating game out of all of them that we showed you which one was your favorite I would have to say the peacock spider. Is it the risk or is it just because he was cute? Okay, so it was cute, but it also was really cool that it danced. Yes, they did a really good job picking out the music um, to play with the video, I think. Yeah, I think all of them do a good job of pairing the, the music to the videos, which is, so it makes it hard to choose. Um, the flamingos were really cool though. I didn't, I didn't know about the flash mob, so. <laughs> I didn't know they had over a hundred different moves. And honestly, they said that, um, so they kept showing how they kept turning their head and going back and forth. 
they actually have scientists have a name for that move. And a lot of times one flamingo will start walking and do, um, I think they call it a head swag or something like that. And he'll start doing that move. And then all of a sudden you've got a hundred and then 500 and then a thousand flamingos. And they all start with that move. They've got some wing moves that they do. Um, I mean, it's just, and then patterns. You saw when they were showing the swirls of some flamingos going in circles that were opposite each other. And it's all very deeply choreographed, even though it doesn't look like it. It's just wild that they can do. I think I'm very impressed by the flamingos, to be honest. Would you say that's your favorite? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I think that I've been lucky enough in person and Kathy was there that we got to see what looked like an artificial scene where we hiked teachers out in the middle of the night uh, so that we could watch the sunrise over a herd of elk. And we got seated and the sun's coming up and the mist parts. And it was like someone cued this bull elk to come out and bugle. Like it was like a spotlight. I don't know how to explain it. It was just the most amazing. I still get chills um, thinking about hearing him first a barred owl called and then there he was in all his majesty. And then as the uh, mist parted more, there was the females. And it was just like, I, I want to say that one's probably my favorite because I got to see it in person. Do you remember that one, Kathy? Oh, how could I forget? And it's so much different hearing it in person. I mean, the videos are cool, but when you hear that sound for real in the wild, it's, it's just unbelievable, I think. But there are so many uniquenesses to each one of the animals that we talk to and lots more. We only touched on a few of them that I think it's really hard to say one is my absolute favorite. So my husband this morning was reminding me about lemurs and how they attract their mate, some of the species of lemurs. And you know how guys will put hair gel in their hair, right? Lemurs yeah. put stuff in their hair too. What do you think it might be? It's not hair gel. Maybe like mud? Close. Close. They will smear Think pool. about some of those gross things we talked about. Yep. They'll style their fur with some poo to get the attention of the female. And... Uh, <laughs> Nope. Because <laughs> <laughs> my husband asked me, he's like, are you doing lemurs? Are you guys going to talk about lemurs? I'm like, oh, I forgot about lemurs. But there's so many different cool, every animal species has something cool or multiple things that are cool that they do. And so it was really hard narrowing it down to a few that would fit in the time that we had. Yeah, these are great. Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, the flamingos just stood out so much to me, but you know, I, I don't know. I mean, some of them are gross. Like, like you well, said. and the flamingos are pretty and they're pink. I mean, who, who doesn't think of romance and think of pink? So, I mean, they fit right in the, the whole theme of romance. So Caitlin, are there any animals that you've ever wondered? Um, like what's your favorite wild animal? I would have to say like foxes or penguins. Foxes or penguins? Penguins have really cool mating behaviors, right, Kathy? Oh, they do. They're another one that will bring their mates gifts. Usually rocks, very special rocks. And they spend a lot of time trying to find the perfect rock and oh, then yeah. present so it to the female. It can't just be any rock. It has to be the perfect rock for them to win. So they spend a lot of time doing that. I and hope that you guys enjoyed this and that you it will encourage you to maybe do some research on your own and find interesting stories about some of the animals we didn't touch on.
Absolutely. Um, yeah, I just want to thank you guys again, Casey and Kathy, for joining us tonight and sharing this information just in time for Valentine's Day for Loves in the Air with the Animal Kingdom. <laughs> Perfect timing. Um, if you've got you. a special someone, <laughs> if you've got a special someone you're thinking about giving a Valentine to, you might think about some different ways to, to give that Valentine. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, thank, thank you to our audience too, for, for joining us this evening. Thank you guys very much. I had a lot of fun. All right. We did as well. You all have a really nice evening and we hope to see you at another proximity event in the future.